Welcome to the White Mage 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to pray to the heal bush better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Why don't you just go from this? I don't want DPS, I just want to heal. To this. Holy. Holy. Heal bush. Holy! This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openness and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will however be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openings and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tool tips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for a Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward skills, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. White Mage is as simple as it gets for healing. Big heals and big damage when you put it out. You tend to be less flexible in what you put out, but anytime you do put out healing, it is big heals. You're even the only healer with a heal that guaranteed heals a player's full HP. Your main focus is pure heals and heals over time, or HOTs, but you do have some minor shielding capabilities. Aside from big numbers, the big gimmick of White Mage is mostly inactive, slowly gaining resources passively for abilities you use last in the priority list, but better use than your normal heals. They also allow for some extra movement for using them over your normal spells, and you are encouraged to do so for yet more big hits and big damage. So even the extra bit you have to manage is pretty low effort compared to any other healer. To play a Conjurer, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Gridania Conjurer's Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Stone. We start off with the basic destroyer of glass houses. It has a 1.5 second cast time and costs 200 MP. It deals 140 potency of damage to a target. There isn't much to be said about it other than you want to spam this button a lot, all the way up to level 90. Level 2, Cure. This is the basic healing spell we have. It heals 450 potency to a single target. It also has a cast time of 1.5 seconds and costs 400 MP. Don't think you need to be using this button a lot. Take note of just how much this heals you when you use it. If you're healing yourself for half your health with just one cast, you don't need to be healing yourself for every slight bit of damage. The same goes for any allies in party. If they are taking scratch damage, you don't need to heal them. Be smart with your healing. A good healer will make effective use of every cast. They heal less, not more. All without letting people die, thanks to efficiency in their heals. Level 4, Arrow. Arrow has no cast time and costs only 200 MP. It deals 50 potency of damage to an enemy, then places a 30 potency damage over time, or dot, to the enemy for 30 seconds. Dots work on a server tick, which occurs every 3 seconds. Divide the length by 3 for 10 dot ticks, for a total 300 potency, 350 including the initial hit. It takes 9 seconds to be as strong as a stone, and any damage beyond that is a nice bonus. Before spamming stone on enemies, put arrow on them. Up against three enemies, put arrow on each one, then cycle back to the first to spam stone until it dies. This takes down one enemy at a time, while still giving you better damage output. Plus, since you're a healer, you can handle being attacked by a group by healing yourself. In party content, when the tank is pulling groups of enemies, you can further use this tactic for even more effect. Tanks often end up pulling multiple groups of enemies at once. Groups of enemies have walk times between them. Even if you use Sprint, 
it will take maybe 5, 10 seconds to reach the next group of enemies. That's time you cannot be using stone, but can use arrow. While running between packs of enemies, put arrow on each one. If every enemy has arrow on it and you're still on the move, keep using arrow. 50 potency of damage is better than none. Rotating through all the enemies also keeps the dot running through the entire encounter. Also, speaking of through an entire encounter, bosses will take several applications of arrow. If a boss takes two minutes, that's four uses of arrow. Keep it running through the entire boss, then get back to spamming stone. And so we begin to earn our roll actions. At level 8, we will get Repose. At level 10, will be Asuna. Some of these roll actions are extremely important. I will, however, not be going over them here. In the corner and description is a link to a roll actions video. If you need to know what these skills do, go check that video. Level 10, Medica. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect, skill. It has a 2 second cast time, costs 900 MP, and has a 15 yom range. You and all allies in range will be healed for 300 potency of healing. Once again, no real need to heal any scratch damage, but if there's a bit of damage missing from multiple players, rather than throw out 2, 3, or even 4 heals of cure, throw out a medica to heal people up. As you progress more, bosses will have raid-wide damage that hits everyone, so you'll definitely need to be using at least a bit of AoE healing if you want to survive. With more extreme cases of it, you'll be doing multiple heals for the group. Don't expect to use this much at all outside of bosses, though. Trash mobs, your goal is keeping the tank up over anyone else, so a medica isn't going to help you too much there. It's very basic, and we'll be seeing much more interesting options as we progress. Level 12, Raise. With an insane 8 second cast time and 2400 mana cost, this revives a fallen player. Be it your fault or someone else's, people will die. Things happen, mistakes happen, lessons get learned. This will be one of those lessons. Before committing to a raise, make sure everyone else in the party will survive while you're stuck standing still. Then start casting and get the dead player up as soon as you can. The best case scenario though, is you can use swift cast. This turns the 8 seconds into 0 seconds. You still have the recast time, but you're able to move and get back to healing the rest of the party sooner, or mentally preparing for healing the player when they get up. You do need to heal them after they get up. They do not have a lot of HP after raising, and a stiff breeze will knock them right back down. You'll need to give them at least something before any form of raid-wide damage comes out, or before they get themselves killed again. The good thing is, there's some leeway that you can inform players of if they don't make use of it. There's about 5 seconds of invulnerability after raising a player. Almost nothing goes through this invuln, meaning you have time to heal. The issue is, if that player does any action before you heal them, that invuln will end prematurely. If they immediately act after raising and just die again, tell them about the invuln, and maybe you'll save yourself and all future healers they get some trouble. Aim to keep people alive, but sometimes it's just not possible. Make sure everyone else lives, then fix whatever mistake happened. We have two more roll actions coming in here. There's Lucid Dreaming at level 14, and then the previously mentioned Swift Cast at level 18. Level 18, Stone Mastery and Stone 2. This is an upgrade to Stone. It has become Stone 2. It now does 190 potency of damage. Arrow is now only stronger than it after 15 seconds. But that's okay. Just place arrow on every enemy you come across, if just for the practice. Enemies do quickly start getting good amounts of HP to survive long, even in party environments. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This is a trait that passively increases all damage in healing you do by 10%. Your numbers are very low at this point, so you're likely not going to even notice a difference. It's more just the base level of numbers have gone up across the board. Enemies have gone 10% up as well when you think about it. Level 30, Cure 2. This is our first class quest base skill all the way at level 30. I hope you've been doing them, and will continue to do them into your job quests. Those will give you a lot of skills, very important ones. This will be the only time I verbally mention this requisite. The top left will otherwise denote when something is quest locked. This is a separate skill, but essentially a replacement for Cure 1. It has a 2 second cast time, costs 1000 MP, and heals a single target for 700 potency. It has a slower cast time and 250% the cost. But consider what I said earlier, you want to heal less, 
but more efficiently. The power is much higher, can heal a huge chunk of even tank HP bars, and the MP cost isn't a cost if you aren't running low. If you're sitting on a full MP bar, what really is an MP cost? Between normal regen and lucid dreaming, MP isn't a huge worry in most cases. Making as much use of the full power of Cure 2, you'll be using less heals overall and have the extra MP to spare. Start shifting to using Cure 2 over Cure 1. Cure 1 will see some fringe usage when needing a slightly faster cast time, like if you need to move and heal, or if things are going poorly to the point of running out of MP, but otherwise has served its purpose. In a decent group, you really shouldn't see the MP issue. To obtain the White Mage job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Conjurer quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Presence of Mind. This is our first ability as a White Mage. It has a 2 minute cooldown and lasts for 15 seconds. For the duration, cast time, recast time, and auto attack delay are reduced by 20%. This is a skill that often gets relegated to openers and using it for dedicated damage. 20% faster attacks means you're getting an extra few attacks, which means enemies die faster. This can also be used for faster healing. When a lot of damage is going out, you may need to cast multiple heals quickly, or maybe some movement is involved. Cutting down on your cast times means you can stop for a second to throw a heal, then get back on the move. This is the harder way to use it, but it's still quite effective. Using presence for just damage is a very easy trap to fall into. By all technicality, it is optimal, but it loses you out on some flexibility on an already inflexible job. Besides, use for healing, you'll still have a good half of the duration for throwing out damage instead. And, uh, our opener is done. There is one more skill we add at level 56, but it doesn't change anything really. So let's just go through it and talk about what little there is. Pre-pull, stone 2. Arrow, stone 2. Stone 2. Presence of mind, stone 2. Stone 2. And it keeps going. We pre-cast a stone 2 to hit the moment the tank pulls. This will often be hard to do in random parties, so don't be too upset if you're unable to get this stone 2 in. We then throw on arrows so the dot begins to tick. After two stones, we'll then use Presence of Mind. We'll wait a little bit, not because of everything we do in specific. This is because of party buffs everyone else will be giving out. Debuffs to enemies or buffs to you, this lets us fit in as many stone cats within party buffs timers. Just remember what I said though, Presence of Mind does have other potential uses. In later levels, you may even want to use it for those situations. Openers are usually safe to throw out Presence of Mind, but your mileage may vary. That's it though, healers are extremely basic when it comes to rotations on average, especially White Mage. Basic but strong healing, basic but strong DPS. So let's get right onto the rest of the toolkit. Level 32, Free Cure. Level 35, Regen. Okay, not actually, but also that is an accurate summary of a free cure. This isn't something you really ever intentionally use. Every cast of Cure 1 comes with a 15% chance of making your next Cure 2 free, if used within 15 seconds. Cure 1 has already been near completely replaced by Cure 2 as it is. If you're using Cure 1, things are probably already going horribly. That 15% chance could maybe save you, but it's 15%. You're using a weaker heal for a low chance at a free cast of the stronger heal you could already be using thanks to a non-zero MP pool. You can't rely on this, and you should be trying to use Cure 2 to the best effect anyway, especially when combined with your other skills. Level 35, Regen. This is our first hot heal over time. It has no cast time and costs 400 MP. It does no direct heal, instead placing regen on the target for 18 seconds. It will heal every 3 seconds for 200 potency, 6 ticks of it. In total, that is a 1200 potency heal. That is a very, very big heal, but due to the time aspect of it, slowly trickles in. When combined with your other heals, that is a good thing. Damage is more consistent than it is burst, and you have plenty of tools for dealing with burst damage besides. 
it slows the rate your tank loses HP as they take damage by trash or bosses. It may even be enough to entirely heal on its own if the incoming damage is low enough. This is where MP economy is firmly in your favor. Proper use of regen will give you much more to work with since you won't need Cure 2 as often. A way to use this that may be overlooked is similar to Arrow. While running between packs of enemies, pop regen on the tank. This comes with an asterisk though. Make sure you are standing next to the tank at all times as they are pulling. You can move away once they are done pulling and have established full enmity on all enemies. But while running from group to group, stand next to them. That is because, if it wasn't already known to you, heals generate enmity. Enemies will attack you for healing if the tank does not grab them. Standing next to the tank with regen on them will negate this issue, since the enemies won't run right past the tank to try and kill you. It makes their job easier while you are still able to passively heal while on the move. Then you can throw on a fresh regen when you reach the final group of enemies and swap to doing damage until you see a cure to or such is needed. If an encounter is long enough and you need healing to be going out, you can throw out regen instead of cure 2. Less mana, more healing, and any consistent damage is mitigated or fully cleared away. Get used to feeling out fight pacing. Now you have a tool to heal players for cheap, but over a long period. If there is no damage coming out for the next, say, 20 seconds, but you need to heal a DPS player who took damage from something they shouldn't have, you can put regen on them and ignore them until the next bit of damage. It will heal them up way ahead of the next bit of damage. Patience is a virtue with regen. Just make sure the next raid wide is a bit further away. If you overestimate it, you'll need a second heal to top up their HP bar. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Same as at level 20, all healing and damage you do is increased. The increase has been bumped up to 30% and extra 20. This is enough that you might notice this time. But again, this is more keeping pace with base values. It's more intended balancing than any real buff. Level 40, Cure 3. With a 2 second cast time and costing a very heavy 1500 MP, this heals the target and all allies within 10 yams by 550 potency. This is a very, very strong AoE spell with some flexibility. If for some reason you need to be across the arena from your party and they need to be healed, you can target one of them, cast Cure 3, and heal them all, provided they are within 10 yams of each other. That's 5 yams less than Medica, and that is significant. It doesn't quite require point blank, but people can't be too spread out. In higher end rating, this ends up being extremely powerful since players will tend to group up closer for healing and buffing. In random groups of just main story or non high end trials, it will be a little harder to use. While you're trying to fine tune the difference in the range, Cure 3 excels in stack mechanics. Everyone is already tightly grouped up for a big hit, so the range is of no issue. What is an issue is that this is a contradiction. Casual content tends not to hurt all that much. So a heal as big as this isn't often warranted. A Medica, Medica 2 we'll see in 10 levels, or even later skills we'll get, will most often be enough for the damage you take. So it's a bit of a hard one to justify, but also one I wouldn't say to ignore. If you get into high-end stuff, Cure 3 can be a key part of your team surviving, but attempting to practice using it will be a bit overkill, and also overkill your mana. That expense isn't to be ignored either. Our next roll action is Surecast at level 44. Level 45? Holy. Burn your enemies to dust. Holy is an 8 yom AoE around yourself with a 2.5 second cast time, the full length of the recast timer. It costs 400 MP to use for a 140 potency hit to all enemies in range. On top of this, any hit enemy will be stunned, provided it has no immunity like bosses have. The first stun will be 4 seconds, the second stun 2 seconds, and a third stun 1 second before the enemy becomes immune to stuns. Holy is a heal. This is my motto. It will always be my motto. On top of damage just outright killing enemies faster and thus making enemies die and unable to hurt the team anymore, Holy Stun is a driving force of why it is so good in dungeons. More accurately would be to say Holy is a mitigation, since enemies cannot attack while stunned. 
properly chained together, that is seven seconds the enemies cannot attack the tank. Do the same thing you always did. Run with the tank and pop arrow and regen. When you stop at the last pack of enemies, do any quick topping up if the tank needs it. Then get to using holy. For the next couple seconds, the enemies will be doing no damage. When the stuns wear off, just keep spamming until everything is dead. Stop for a cure too, as needed. Since you're already going to be putting arrow on all the enemies, you won't need to worry about those by the time it's time to holy. If there are three or more enemies, it's time to holy. It's stronger on two right now, but as you level, it'll be three enemies that holy is stronger in damage. And two enemies? That's pretty non-threatening. Learn the dance, learn how much holy you can do, and at least do the three holy casts per group. At the worst, used as poorly as you can, holy is seven seconds of stun. That is seven seconds of no damage, no healing, and the tank able to delay cooldown usage. Speaking of cooldowns though, all tanks have an ultimate cooldown after level 50 that you are highly incentivized to not use holy during. Ideally, the tank will tell you when they will use their ultimate. Learn their differences, react accordingly, and hold on to using holy until after their ultimate is finished. Ultimates come with complete invulnerability, so having your stuns during complete invincibility means they didn't help at all. So, go crazy with holy. Just hold a little bit when the tank graces you with a basic communication of, I'm going to use my ultimate. Seriously, super useful, even if it goes against the basic instinct of being a holy mage. Level 46, Arrow Mastery and Arrow 2. Arrow has been upgraded to Arrow 2. The base hit is still 50 potency, but now the dot will be worth 50 potency per tick. 500 total potency. That is a total 550 potency. Once again, after 9 seconds, Arrow is stronger than Stone. Otherwise, same usage. Our final roll action is here with Rescue at level 48. Level 50, Medica 2. Costing 1000 MP, Medica 2 will heal you and all allies within a 20 yarm range of yourself for 200 potency of healing. It has a 2 second cast time. On top of this, a regen will be placed on everyone healed. It lasts for 15 seconds, healing 100 potency, or a total 500 potency hot, 700 potency heal. Much like Cure 2 is a strong but expensive heal and regen is stronger, cheaper, but takes a while, Medica 2 is stronger than and cheaper than Cure 3, but takes a while. As a note, regen stacks with Medica 2's regen. They're not the same buff, despite the name. However, that does not mean use this in trash pools. The single target regen is what needs to be on the tank. Medica 2 could just be a Cure 2 instead and will be more effective. Medica 2, obviously, is for AoE healing. If Medica isn't enough to fully heal the party after some form of raid-wide or stack damage, Medica 2 will more slowly, but more assuredly, heal everyone to full. And it has none of the downsides. This is even bigger than Medica, hitting everyone within 20 yams. That's double the radius of Cure 3. Once again, patience is a virtue. There's one damaging attack and nothing coming for the next 20 seconds, Medica 2, and then let the regen handle the rest. The cost is almost exactly the same as Medica, while being significantly stronger. So you're even saving mana now by being patient. Two Medicas or one slow-acting Medica 2. Just be wary of those faster-acting fights. You may need to supplement Medica 2. Maybe a Medica to cover the first hit, then Medica 2 to heal everyone after the second. Then sit back, relax, and throw some air and stones. Holy figures are allowed to do that, right? Level 50, Benediction. On a 3 minute cooldown, this will fully heal any valid target's HP. 1000 HP, 10,000 HP, 1 million HP, it works. You might end up considering this only a button for emergencies, but it can be used for much more. Gunbreaker's ultimate cooldown will always put them to 1 HP. They need to be healed after, and Benediction is a one button solution, if you wouldn't prefer to throw them some Cure 2 or other skills you have. You don't want to holy while the invuln is running after all. You can also properly time the skill usage to purposely let the tank get low, then heal them all at once with benediction. If an emergency never happens, then you never used a very strong heal in your toolkit. Make use of it. If nothing else, in tougher bosses, save a DPS with benediction when they take avoidable damage before a raid wide. If you won't make your own, actively look for opportunities to use it. Benediction is too good to ignore. And again, it's the only full heal in the game. Just beware the short animation before the heal applies. 
It's maybe about half a second after hitting the button that the heal goes out. That's how we round out the A Realm Reborn toolkit for Holy Mage, the most outright encapsulation of a simple but strong healing. We're gonna see some more often used abilities going ahead, and some real identity beyond power with Heaven's Word. Level 52, Secret of the Lily and Aflatus Solus. You now become a botanist and grow your own lilies on the Lily Gauge, when in combat this gauge will slowly build up a glow. After 20 seconds, the gauge will fully glow and bloom a lily, resetting the timer. You can store up to three lilies after a full minute, and then the gauge will stop filling. Lilies will be spent on Aflatus Solus. This is a GCD heal the same power as Cure 2, 700 potency. The differences are that it is instant cast and has no MP cost. You spend a lily, and that's it. If you're in a situation you need a Cure 2, hit Aflatus Solus instead. If you need a faster heal, even if it's weaker, don't care one anymore, use Aflatus Solus. 20 seconds is extremely quick, and because healing requirements aren't linear even with consistent and constant damage, you could end up having two or three lilies saved up before needing to cast a heal. Any mana issues you are having will certainly start to melt away now. You have a very common, completely free heal now. Again, put emphasis on using lilies before Cure 2. Level 52, Asylum. Upon using Asylum, you will be given a targeting reticle. Click again or press X on controller to place the skill up to 30 yarms away from yourself. This will begin the 90 second cooldown and a bubble of healing will appear. Anyone standing inside the bubble will be healed like a normal hot. The act of placing the bubble will also heal anyone inside. Every tick of healing is 100 potency for the 24 second duration. That's 8 ticks of the hot and a ninth from placing for a total 900 healing to anyone inside the bubble. Once again, patience is rewarded. Rather than using a Medica 2, throw down Asylum and just wait for it to do all the work for you. And unlike Medica 2, you can use this in trash pulls. As the tank finishes pulling enemies, plop an Asylum down in the last group of enemies. Combined with regen, this will handle a big chunk of the incoming damage from enemies. If the tank gets low within the duration, you can pop an Aflatus to bring their bar back up. Just beware that the time is limited. It will run out eventually. In bosses, you can use this for just the tank or to cover the entire party. Depending on boss damage output, you can rely on regens alone while they last, or with raid wides, as mentioned, replace Medica 2. Or if extreme enough, both. But that's not usually called for. But this one does come with a problem. People just not standing in the bubble. So many people will just stand outside the bubble. Right outside. Far away. You name it. What is wrong with people? I don't know, but also yell at them if they don't stand in your bubble. But also nicely but they should be in your bubble when you place them down. One final use is a non-healing use. You can use this to visualize the range of Cure 3. Both are 10 yams. It can be hard to get the feeling of Cure 3 because of the animation is faint at the edge of the range, but this will show you the exact range of the spell. Level 54, Stone Mastery 2 and Stone 3. Stone 2 is now upgraded to Stone 3. This is a 220 potency hit. 12 seconds for an arrow to be stronger, but given enemies are pretty strong now, you will have no issues getting 12 seconds on an arrow timer. Level 56, a size. On a short 45 second cooldown, this is both an attack and a heal, and also worth 500 MP regen to use. All enemies within 15 yawns will take 400 potency of damage. You and all allies within range will be healed for 400 potency. Note, Damage and healing potency is the same, but the damage and healing numbers will differ. Much like a lot of things in the game, it gets boiled down to damage. Use this on cooldown for a big hit, especially in trash. 400 times however many enemies? That's a lot of damage. But it's also a strong heal. 400 potency is above a medica. Any raid wides that would be healed by just a medica, you can skip the medica and use a size. Slightly more than a medica? Don't need Medica 2. A size might be enough alone. Try and time a size as both a heal and damage when you can. Wait 5 seconds and you can heal a raid wide. Wait 5 seconds and then use it. Nothing coming for the next 20 seconds? Might as well just pop a size to keep the cooldown running. Get some damage and heal just the tank in a boss fight. Trash mobs? The heal is just about guaranteed to heal the tank a bit. 
Even when aiming for damage, the tank stops pulling and plants their feet, they're gonna take some damage. So you can pop a size and then start your holy spam. This gives you a bit of help to yourself so you can focus on them holies. Keep the cooldown running where you can. You can get a lot of a size uses over an entire duty. And this is the other skill for our opener. Yeah, it does damage, some decent damage at that, so we want to slot it into our opener. It comes in at the end after all the party buffs will be up. The same reason as Presence of Mind. Simple, super easy, let's move on to our next skills. Level 58, Thin Air. This is a skill with charges. You can hold two uses of Thin Air at once. The moment you use a single charge, the charge time will begin. The charge time is 60 seconds, or 2 minutes total for both charges. This has one effect. For 12 seconds you will be given a buff that reduces the mana cost of any one spell to zero. Gonna use a cure 3 for some reason? Prepare a thin air usage, and then use cure 3 for completely free. For some reason need to spam heals on the tank and you're out of lilies? Keep your MP up by using thin air on two of them. It's a really basic and obvious use. Any skill with a big ticket MP cost, thin air it. The saved MP from using them for like, holy, won't make a difference. You're not going to run out of MP if you're using Lucid and a size from using Holy. It's those Cure 2s and other heals that will do it. Level 60, Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton is a big name and a big heal. On a 60 second cooldown, this is an OGCD Cure 2. Combine this with an Athletus Solus, and you can heal 1400 potency in half a second. Use it by itself for even a quick free Cure 2. Why use an Athletus Solus at all if you can just Tetra? Did a DPS stand in an AoE and you now have to heal them up for the raid wide? Tetra then go back to worrying about the raid wide, which you can probably just a size away. The priority keeps shifting. Why cure one if you can cure two? Why cure two if you can spend a Lily? Why Lily if you can Tetra Grammaton? It's simple, as strong as your main GCD heals, and has a short cooldown. Keep using it. Keep the tank alive, save the DPS right after they make a mistake. Just don't completely ignore it for some reason. Again, not just saved for emergencies, you can prevent the emergency to begin with instead. But that's again, how Holy Mage ends. Simple but powerful. This is not a trend going forward though, there's going to be some slight complexities in our next level cap skill, but we have some simple stuff along the way. Let's see it in action with Stormblood. Level 64. Stone Mastery 3 and Stone 4. Oh man, another stone upgrade! Stone 4 is 260 potency of damage to a target. That's it, that's the deal. Level 66, Divine Benison. On a very short 30 second cooldown, this is a shielding ability. You place a shield for 15 seconds on a target. It is worth 500 potency of healing. You're going to be spamming this quite a lot. 30 seconds is short cooldown and it can be used in a few ways. Throw it on the tank for free damage prevention. That can be when they stop pulling enemies so they don't suddenly take a huge chunk of damage when enemies all catch up. Or it can be used for tank busters. Big hits, bosses do that hurt tanks a lot. Rather than needing to heal them after, just reduce the damage to low or nothing. If there's going to be damage coming in, just use it up. Or maybe you're preparing to use it and you see a DPS take an extra hit. They probably now have a vulnerability up and will take more damage from the next attack. Tetra them, Benison them, and see them survive quite confidently. Unless there's like, five Vuln stacks on them, that will hurt. And then they might only survive just barely thanks to Benison. But they did survive, and that's the difference. Keeping people at max HP can only do so much. A little bit extra of a buffer can make the difference. Though this will be less about making up the difference, and more about just using it a lot. Aim for those spots, but with such a short cooldown, you can use it a ton. Level 70? Plenary Indulgence. This is one that takes a bit of technique, but will up our AoE healing power. It has a 60 second cooldown and 20 yom range. Everyone within 20 yoms will be blessed with Confession for 10 seconds. Any AoE spells you cast will trigger the Confession effect for extra healing, 200 potency of it. This is a short buff that requires you to be spending some healing time. A size isn't good enough for confessing your sins. You're going to want to bust this out for anywhere there's some big healing required. Mostly back-to-back -back damage situations. Everyone is damaged and there is damage coming up. Plenary. Throw out a Medica or Medica 2. Get hurt. Medica or Medica 2. Or Cure 3 if there's a possibility. 
Medica boosts up to a 500 potency heal, and Cure 3 a 750 potency heal when you add in Planary. In more casual content, you don't get much of that, though. You'll pop this just for a singular heal that's needed. Buff up the initial power of a Medica 2 so people don't panic that they're not full HP the moment they take damage. Or you could even use it for the extremely specific case of you haven't healed the tank in a bit until so the red white actually puts him low on HP, so Confession will make the AoE heal you are already going to use heal the tank a bit extra for you. Like I said, extremely specific. On the plus negative side, healing does get harder going forward due to intended scaling, so the idea of using it for just a little bit of extra power isn't beyond the realm of commonly useful. Get the feel for if you're needing multiple heals to solve a healing requirement. Instead of multiple heals, use your tools. Medica with an Asylum, Medica with an Assize, Medica with Planary Indulgence. And if you have good timing along with the fight having quick AoE timing, can even make Planary Indulgence solve two instances of damage. That's how Stormblood ends. Like I said, a bit less simple for a cap skill, but once you get into the feel of it, it can be a good boost to your healing. It gets even better going forward thanks to one of our next skills. Let's go see it in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Arrow Mastery 2, Stone Mastery 4, Dia and Glare. We're getting more potency boosts. Arrow is now becoming Dia. Dia is a 60 potency hit and a 60 potency dot. In total, that's 660 potency of damage. Stone will become Glare. Glare is a 290 potency hit to a single target. By now you know how to use these. Level 74, Transcendent Afflatus, and Afflatus Misery. And now we see why people say Blood for the Blood Lily. And not just because it is a reference to popular video game space series, Kerbal Space Program. Spending our lilies will nourish the Blood Lily on the right side of the gauge. After three lilies are spent, the Blood Lily will bloom. When the Blood Lily is in full bloom, we can use Afflatus Misery. This is an instant cast AoE. It deals a mass of 1240 potency to an enemy, and 620 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the initial target. This is a massive amount of damage, so much so it's actually a DPS increase. Consider the following. Glare is a 290 potency hit. Four casts of it would be 1160 potency. To get a Blood Lily, you must cast three Afflatus skills and a fourth cast for Misery's 1240 potency. You actually gain 80 potency every minute for using Misery. Even better is the fact that you are likely spending your lilies anyway. You're using lilies to heal your team and passively generating blood lilies for big damage. And as mentioned, it works for AoE. It is unfortunately smaller than Holy's range, but is more than made up for by being over 600 potency of damage per enemy you do hit. Since Holy has only three stuns in it, you'll easily be able to fit in Aphlodis Solus mid trash pool. Stuns are finished, tank is taking damage, you throw out an Aphlodis Solus. The Blood Lily blooms, and you deal a major hit to the enemies. And it takes only two enemies to beat a Holy on ten. If you hit basically anything at all with Misery, you're just an icon of destruction. Anytime you have a Blood Lily, use it all but immediately. You get so many lilies, you can get so many Afflatus casts. You're healing your party, and now you're actively gaining damage for it. Keep the timer running. You can hold on to two lilies for any time you need them, but the moment you're about to cap out at three lilies, spend one. Remember, once you hit three lilies, you pause the lily timer, and potentially lose out on more blood lilies. Level 76, Afflatus Rapture. And spending Lily should be extremely easy now. Aphletus Rapture costs a Lily and is 300 potency of healing, just like Medica. Unlike Medica though, the range is a wider 20 yams. It nourishes the Blood Lily like Solus. This is obvious how to use. Anytime you would use Medica and you have Lilies, you can just Rapture instead, especially when movement is needed. On top of that, this is what makes Plenary Indulgence even better. Aphletus Rapture will trigger Confession, so that makes it a 500 potency heal now. Again, you have so many lilies, and Aphletus Misery is going to boost your damage. You need to heal anyway, so focusing on your lilies is going to be extremely useful. Level 78, Enhanced Asylum. Asylum has been granted a secondary buff. Any player standing inside the bubble will now receive 10% extra healing. This can be useful in a bunch of ways. You're already using it for the regen and trash pulls to keep the tank up. 
but enemies are doing far more damage than Asylum is healing. The regen you throw on after the tank steps into the bubble will now be boosted, as will all the heals you throw out to them for the duration of Asylum. In bosses, you've been trying to do the same. Use Asylum for some regen so you don't need to do the healing manually. Enemy damage and AoEs back-to-back -back situations I mentioned many times, Asylum itself may not be enough. You can now throw down Asylum to boost the power of the big heals you throw out between raid wides. Made it a Medica 2? The regen from it and the Asylum will take care of the second attack quickly. Or since, hopefully, everyone is standing inside the bubble, Cure 3 will work if the damage is that high. In 8 player duties, you can use this for your co-healer. If your scholar friend is preparing a big shield for an incoming mechanic or the next raid wide hit, you can place down Asylum so their shield is 10% bigger. Up to now, our toolkit has been all things we ourselves could do for our party. This time we could do something to help our co-healer do things better. Level 80, Temperance. On a 2 minute cooldown, we are granted 2 effects for 20 seconds. The first is that all healing magic we ourselves do is increased by 20%. Need a giant cure 3, cure 2, medica 2, or what have you? 20% more with temperance. The other effect is that you and all allies within 30 yards of you will take 10% less damage. This is arguably your biggest skill, next to even your level 90 skill. 30 yards is huge. Unless you're standing at the edge of an arena or doing alliance raids, this is going to affect your entire party for sure. Whatever damage the mechanics or basic raid wides are throwing out is being mitigated by a good bit. What isn't being mitigated is going to be healed extremely quickly by your next AoE heal. You don't need everyone standing inside of it like the 10% boost of Asylum, though that 10% boost does stack. If your heal can reach them, 20 yams away for an Athletus Rapture, they're getting an extra 20% off of it. The hardest parts of a fight to heal the parts with the most mistakes from players, this is your go-to button. It lasts for quite a while, so even some longer mechanics can be covered by Temperance. Slightly more spaced out, but still back-to-back raid-wide damage can be taken care of with no real issue. Well, maybe some in the higher-end stuff? Both buffs are strong because you will need both of them in whatever you're using it on. In the easier content, use it any way you see fit. Couple boss raid-wides, a busy mechanic with a bit of damage, or trash mobs. I beat this dead horse because it is truly the hardest part of dungeons. 10% less damage for the tank for 20 seconds? It's a cooldown they are forced to be using. If you're unlucky enough to get a tank who uses few or no mitigations, Temperance is one they physically can't avoid. And it helps you heal them. Just beware of that 2 minute cooldown. It's pretty lengthy, so you'll want to be sure you want to use it in this specific spot for trials and raids. Simply powerful, simply helps in a couple ways. Any point you need to heal and is going to be trouble, you now have a tool for it. Shadowbringers has bumped up the healing difficulty enough that this will be the perfect companion going forward. But let's see what additional we get with Endwalker. Now, due to the nature of healers and it being hard to show how a healer works outside of content, I'm going to show Endwalker Dungeons. I will specifically be picking and choosing footage as best I can to avoid spoilers, but if you are at all afraid of any spoilers to this wonderful finale, come back after you've seen the post-game dungeons. Main story isn't shown. Level 82, Glare Mastery, Holy Mastery, Glare 3, and Holy 3. Glare and Holy are being upgraded to Glare 3 and Holy 3. Where did Glare 2 and Holy 2 go? Shut up, nobody asked you. Anyway, Glare is now 310 potency of damage. Holy 3 is our first Holy upgrade to 150 potency. 10 potency on an AoE is actually a lot more significant than a 20 potency gain on a single target. Misery is still just as strong as ever though. Level 85, Enhanced Healing Magic. This is a bunch of healing potency boosts. Kier 1 is now 500 potency with Kier 2 doing 800. Tetragrammaton, the OGCD version of Kier 2, is still only 700, so you will see Tetra being slightly less effective than a Kier 2 but still is free and OGCD. Speaking of though, Aflatus Solus is also 800 potency now, so that still takes extreme priority, still a free Kier 2. Medica and Aflatus Rapture follow that same pattern with both being boosted to 400 potency. They are now equally strong in healing to an size rather than stronger though. Kier 3 is also 600 potency. Regen has been boosted to 250 potency per tick or 1500 potency of healing. 
Medica 2 is also a 250 potency heal with 150 potency regen. That total is 1000 potency of healing. Some of these potency boosts are small, but others like that, really big. Level 86, Aqua Veil. On a short 60 second cooldown, this can be placed on yourself or your party member to reduce all damage they take by 15%. The effect lasts for 8 seconds. Remember how Temperance was great for forcing a tank to have mitigation? Yeah, so is Aqua Veil. The timer is short, but 15% every 60 seconds means you'll get it for every fight, or multiple times in bosses. Is the tank going to take a tank buster? Aqua Veil. A DPS is super far out of position and is going to take avoidable damage? Aqua Veil them to reduce it. Even nicer if they already have made mistakes and are sitting on bone stacks and increased damage taken. It's similar to Divine Benison in that way. Any way that skill is useful, Aqua Veil is useful. Smaller amounts of damage less useful though. One or two boss auto attacks? That's not exactly helping. Benison has a fixed amount of damage it will reduce with a pretty lengthy timer. Twice the length of an Aqua Veil. You really want to stick to those emergency spots for DPS, tank busters, or for the big constant damage of trash pools. Level 88, Enhanced Divine Benison. Speaking of the devil, Divine Benison has been upgraded to a skill with two charges. This means you can store multiple, specifically two, uses of Divine Benison. The moment you use one charge, the cooldown will begin, with a 30 second cooldown. That's a total 60 second cooldown to get both charges back from nothing. This ups the flexibility of this skill. All the exact same uses apply, but more or multiple ways at once. Some kind of mechanic might potentially kill two players, give them both a benison instead of saving only one if that would be the difference. And with such a short cooldown, you can constantly be spending them with little worry. You may even want to be spending the charges so that the cooldown is constantly running and you waste no charges. The exception is if you know you will need both charges very soon, like for back-to-back -back tank busters or tank busters that hits both tanks. Can protect them both with venison and even give one an Aqua Veil on top. Level 90, Lithurgy of the Bell, from this point forward just called Lily Bell. This is a strange but interesting one. On a 3 minute cooldown, you are given a target marker to place down, just like Asylum. The chosen position will sprout a Lily Bell for 15 seconds. You will have five stacks of Lily Bell placed for the duration of the bush. Anytime you take damage, with a one second cooldown, the Lily Bell will send out a 20 Yom AoE heal. This spends one of the five stacks and heal anyone within range by 400 potency. On top of this, when time runs out or you press the Lily Bell again, everyone in range of the bush will be healed by 200 potency per stack of Lily Bell. So if you have all five stacks of Lily Bell remaining, Everyone in range will be healed for 1,000 potency. That is a gigantic heal, but the potential 2,000 potency of healing from the bush is even greater. The purpose of this type of skill is due to an increase of smaller but consistent raid-wide damage, often in the form of stack markers. While used to be relegated to only Ock Morns, many bosses in the high end will now do these kinds of attacks. Lily Bell is the perfect Uno reverse card, especially if your co-healer is also using their version of this skill. Rather than your team taking any real damage, every hit will be automatically healed by the bush provided it is placed in the right spot. It's a bit rough to use in dungeon content. Dungeon bosses don't often do these multi-hit raid wides, and in trash mobs you won't really be taking damage. There are extremely rare cases where enemies can do raid wides, but Generally, you'll be manually detonating your bush for a big tank heal. Trash is forever more dangerous than bosses, so a 1000 potency OGCD heal for the tank is nothing to sneeze at. This is very much an 8 player trial and raid style skill more than some of the other versions of the bush. But even the worst use of this is a 1000 potency heal. Try and start thinking of uses for this sooner than later though. That 3 minute cooldown does restrict your ability to use this as often as you might. Watch close for those multi-hit raid wides and counter them strongly. But that covers the full length of the White Mage Toolkit. It's mostly just straightforward power. You might be generally inflexible, but the flexibility you do have is more than enough for your power. Plus you'll have a second healer in the hardest stuff there to help out. They handle the gymnastics? You grow a bush. Somehow White Mage ended up being the better botanist. Thank you for watching this White Mage 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. 
Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies.